Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to start a new altered book. I have all these pristine canvases to work on. When I was setting aside images earlier this week, thinking about this layout, thinking about this video, these are some of the pieces that I put aside. You know I love me some engravings and some cathedral ruins. But you know what else? It has just been one of those weeks. It has been one of those months. And so I just couldn't bring myself to do a monochromatic layout. Even though that does look pretty good. But I, I wasn't feeling it at all. Instead, I was feeling the, the need for color and for flowers and for hope and boldness. So instead, this is the page that I made. It opens like this. And today's video is going to show how I went from this blank canvas to the finished page, talking about the collage, layers, embellishment, all the good stuff. If you like altered books, if you like journal arts, vintage books, and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications, and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go alter a page. Usually when I make a collage video, I talk a lot about how the focal points that are characters interact with each other or don't interact with each other to create a narrative or a story. Today's page is going to be somewhat more abstract, so I'm going to talk about, not about story so much as balance, color, and why some images, even in an abstract page, work together well while others not so much. When I started making these process collage videos, one of the first things that I heard that really surprised me was how many people said, I had no idea. I thought you just took a couple of elements, boom, 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 and put them together and had a page. That is not how it works. It took me almost two hours just to gather up this long list of candidates here. Went through my box of flowers, my box of birds, and um, this is what I'm starting with for my page. Thankfully, I've decided to make this whole new altered book flower themed, so I don't have to worry about the pressure of picking out the perfect pieces. I can just have fun, and if they don't show up today, they will show up in pages and videos coming soon. So now I'm going to go through again and uh, narrow down the choices and start making a page. I have wanted to use this paper napkin for ages. Paper napkins are one of my favorite thinking outside of the box art supplies. They come in a, a zillion beautiful styles and patterns. They're easy to find and they don't cost much. When I get ready to put this on the page, see this is just, like I said, a paper napkin. It's got several layers. When I get ready to put it on the page, I'm gonna peel away all of the layers except for the patterned one. It's already like a tissue. So now when I glue it down, when the adhesive hits it, it's gonna go semi-transparent and you can see what's underneath. The trouble with trying to cut it at this, when it's, it's like a tissue, is that it's just way, way too thin and it doesn't like it. So I wanna trim this and use it as part of a background I'm not opening it up. I'm cutting it from the thickest way I can with all of the layers folded up there. Now it's got a lot more sturdiness and I can go around and cut out what I want to be a pattern on my page. It's still a little wobbly, but it's so much easier than the tissue. Now 
now that I have a piece cut out, I think it's going to look super. First, what I want to do is peel away that last layer. Sometimes there's even more layers than you think. You have to just keep peeling and peeling and peeling until you get to the really good stuff. And that is the final layer. Now, I thought about putting it over here, which means that it would almost be looking in, so there would be something interacting with it over here. I could glue it over the binding, and if the binding was perfectly flat, I might. But this one's got a little bit of a bump in it. It's not perfectly flat, and that means that as the book is open and closed over and over, this will eventually give, and it won't look so pretty. So I would have been pulling it back. And I actually like it better over here. But again, I've got to pull it back. So now I'm going to trim it so that it's going to go on just short of where the binding is. When the tissue is this thin, you really can't add your adhesive to the, the tissue itself. So you would need to put it on the page. I put this down flat and I drew all the way around it so that I've got this template of where it's going to go. Then I added my adhesive. I'm using a gel mat and I'm using a small brush to get into these little crevices here. And now I'm going to add the tissue. Just mess around with it, see so if you can get it to fit there. It's wrinkling a little bit and I don't care. Because look at that. You can see the text underneath and that is gorgeous. Now, to make sure that I got a very tight seal on that, I put down a piece of greaseproof paper. It's like parchment paper. And I took something, a flattening tool, and just made sure that all of the edges and seams are where they need to be. For this side, Let's try out some of the other elements that were on the table earlier. This is an oversized flower from a Redoute print. And I'm not unhappy with this. I think it's, it's, it would make a very simple page, but a beautiful one. But that's not going to be it. I have this, uh, this backing from a cabinet photo. And I took out the person in it and used it for something else, but I kept this, free art supplies, and now I want to use it as a kind of a frame. I have these vintage postcards, and a lot of these have floral themes. And that is also a nice page, because she's... Uh, her pink flowers are picking up this pink flower here, and she's gazing at them fondly. But no. I am going to use this in, in another page coming up. I'm very tempted by this. It's another vintage French postcard. And uh, again, the colors are picking up the colors here, so it draws the eye across both pages, making them not page page, but one layout. I am very tempted by this, but I have wanted to use another piece for a long time and I'm gonna have a go at that. This is a card that I got at a postcard show here in, in Wales in Forest Fa. It's weird and handmade. 
On the inside are these beautiful old lithograph style printed cards. And these are from the 19 teens. Someone found these and trimmed them and made a back from more contemporary cards. These are from the 50s. But they put them together, and I don't know what the deal is with the fringe, but they added lots of fringe. And so this is just a, a fun, handmade piece that I don't quite know what to do with. But since we're going with flower themes, I really want to use these. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. Look what happens when I close the book. You can see the silk fringe, the tassels hanging out, and so you've got some pretty messy, distressed texture here. But there's a problem. I don't like this style. It's just not my era. And I wanted to try altering this top to make it a little prettier. When I originally cut these flowers out of Mr. Marshall's flower book, I just assumed that they were going to go there. But I was, uh, I miscalculated and they're just too big and I don't want to glue them into the silk fringe. So another page. Then I thought, why not just cover it with something? And I had this French text but it didn't fit. I liked very much the way this Welsh, this page of a Welsh prayer book looks, the foxing. But again, it, it didn't fit. And you've still got these edges. And I just don't care for this vanilla yellow color. At least not on this page. So all of these things that I tore out and thought might work, are not going to work unless I can get rid of that. So I have two strong candidates. I went to the scrap box and found this handwritten French document and I can trim that and put it there. But I also have this text and this is actually from the 1840s and uh, again, beautiful old foxing and interest to it. And if I use this, it might pick up the text here and the text here, which make it more cohesive as one piece. So I'm going to trim both of those and see which one I like. When in doubt, ink up your edges. So I took my blending tool and this is a distress ink in aged mahogany. And I added a border to both of these pieces like this. It adds some age, but also breaks up the, the edge here, some interest. And it's still really close, but I decided to go with a handwritten piece. Once it was inked up, it seemed to fade into the piece a little bit better. And it's gonna be pretty, and I really like it. Now to decorate this cover. I was thinking about possibly using this bird's egg. I love bird's eggs and it certainly fits into the spring-like feel of the layout. Try it like that for a little, little whimsy. And that would add some balance there anchor the page down here and then it goes flying off up there. That's a possibility. I also have these oversized cigarette cards. Back in the day, if you bought a packet of cigarettes, they came with cards and they would be in a different series. There were famous people, cars, birds, animals, and flowers. They're usually very thin like this. But I found these at a local car boot sale, and they're, they're, they're big and chunky. I love them. I thought about going with something like this, because that's going to pick up the color here and here and draw the eye across. 
but I'm also considering this Larkspur because it's got the dark red and the red, the pink and the pink, the purple and the purple, and the purple and the purple. And so now this page is really has plenty of balance and, and the theme goes across both pages. I might do this. But I am also thinking about Mr. Bird. The funny thing is that when I put this bird here, anything with a face, all of a sudden we start to have a narrative. Because even though he's very simple, it's as though he's gazing at these flowers, maybe to get some nectar, or maybe he just finds them beautiful. Maybe he's about to sing a song. So now we do start to have a story. But the only trouble is that there's no yellow anywhere else on the page. So I went off to the box of butterflies and I found this guy. And... I wish I could have found a smaller one, but I couldn't find one with just the same yellow-orange color. But now I could put it there, and that would, that would work, because you're going to have that yellow picking up this, pulling the eye across. Also pulling the eye across is just the direction of his body and his tail. We could give this a little more movement, like that. It's going to fade in, come into our flowers a little bit and maybe even be hard to see because it's so busy behind him. But it would make a pretty page. I don't know. This is a good way to show how important it is when you're laying out a collage piece to move to move your pieces even just a little to see if it changes the feel of the page. So I wasn't really happy with that because he's getting swallowed up by the background. That's okay. But then look what happens when I turn it this way. It's still working with a lot of background, but something about the way that it is now going up and out like this liberates it from some of that busyness and it also contributes to the story here so that's what i'm going to do finally i'm going to add just a tiny bit of mark making to do something with that space there i found this pastel and it's very much the same yellow orangey yellow as this so I have also this stencil and I'm going to put the stencil down here and this in my spray bottle, I've got some water and I'm just going to very, very lightly spritz, not wet, just damp. Color over the stencil just a little bit like this and then work it in like that yeah let's do that again over here i often get asked this i do not fix this because if you really let it dry, it isn't going anywhere. It's going to stay put. So no, you don't really need to fix it. And it's kind of fun because it's actually got some dimension to it. A little bit of relief there. I'm going to stop. I have a newsletter coming out this Sunday. I'm a little bit behind, but it is on its way. It's going to have our tutorials and some... Uh, special uh, things in my shop for Easter. It's also going to have some free scans of vintage French Easter postcards. 
that you can print up and use in your own work. I can't show them to you now because uh, <clears throat> I left them in my scanner in my flat and I'm not there. But they are fun. If you'd like to get those, just subscribe. The link is in the text below this video. Until next week, happy making.